أزال الألم وأرمي يرى واشتري الزار دارش وباسم طالي دارش دارش وباسم طالي وتراسني بأمي مملا وتراسني بأمي مملا القلق يكون باتجاهين الأول بموطننا الأصلي يعني العراق وإيران كشعوب إسلامية ترفض وجودنا وهذا يتطلب يعني أن نوجد مكان آمن لشعبنا حتى يستمرون بالحياة والحد يعني قبل أقل من شهر الحكومة العراقية أو البرلمان العراقي أصدر قرار أنه تغيير الديانة للأطفال إلى الإسلام إذا واحد من والديهم صار مسلم فتصور أنت العائلة كاملة يتغير دينها إذا واحد عجب يصير مسلم بالإجبار على الأطفال والشباب أو الشابات يغيروا دينهم الاتجاه الثاني إحنا هنا بمهجر وماكو إمكانيات سبقا تحدثنا بها إمكانيات أنه نطبع الفكر الديني أو المعلومات الدينية باللغة الدول اللي نعيش بها أو نبني منادي اللي ممكن تجمع الناس ونطيهم الموعظة والحكمة الدينية ونحصنهم بثقافة دينية فمحاولاتنا بطيئة مقابل الوضع اللي نعيشه والتطور قاعد نعيشه بالمهجر About 10,000 Mandaeans live in Sweden. Most of them came from Iraq, especially Baghdad and Basra areas in the 1990s and the 2000s. Today, there is widespread fear that, away from their centuries-old South Mesopotamian homelands, the Mandaean religion and culture are facing an uncertain future. Hamail Sabar and her sister Bashir, who fled Iraq in 1997 and have been living in Stockholm almost ever since, are very worried. Every single day we're losing someone. I think it's gonna be smaller and smaller. And uh, in the end it's gonna be just a little bit very tiny group or community who think or, or believe in, in the Monday. Because it's really hard to, to live here as a Monday. Well, as, as uh, I'm, I spoke to some of my cousins, which is uh, born in 90, the youngest generation, and they set a deadline to Mandarin. It's like they, they said the, the Mandarin will end about 25 years from, from now. Well, I'm a man. وأعتقد تماما أن الدين كتب من الرب أنه يلائم كل الأزمنة والعصور وكل المستويات العقل وتطور العقل ما ممكن أن نعيش بزمن نوح وما ممكن أن نعيش بزمن النبي يحيى الإنسان يطور في تفكيره في عقله بأدوات حياته معيشته كل شيء يطور سابقا كل الأديان والبشرية أجمع تشرب ماء من النهر لكونه ماء نقي وصالح وغير مضر بالصحة مرت بعد الثورة الصناعية بدأت الأنهر تتلوث مع الوقت حاليا أغلب أنهر العالم ملوثة فما ممكن إحنا كرجال دين عندنا علم وعندنا عقل وعندنا كتاب ديني يوصينا بأن نحافظ على الصحة نسمح للناس تشرب مياه ملوثة فلا بد إحنا نتعامل مع الماء النظيف ونشربه وإن كان واصل البيت هو بس مجرد قناة يوصل ماء نظيف بالقرب من عندنا لأنه ابتعدنا عن المعيشة قرب الأنهار والأنهار أصبحت ملوثة فمن الصعب أنه يومية واحد يفتش على النهر النظيف حتى يجلب من عند الماء صعب بسنة الـ 98 1998 كنت رجل دين وصارت ثورة ضد صدام حسين بالعراق بمنطقتنا بالبصرة فخابرت رئيسنا الرشأ مع عبد الله كان يعني قتل بالشوارع وكان عندنا عيد البنجة بشهر الثالث 
مارش فكان لازم انا اصبغ الناس فسالت وين راح اصبغهم القتل بالشوارع وما مستعد انا اضحي يقتل اي فرد من دائي بالشارع فطلب مني انه انا اتصرف فانا قلت له راح ابدي اصبغهم بالحوض وعلى شكل وجبات عوائل اتصلهم بالتليفون وجبات يجون للحوض ويصبغون فقال هذا فكره عظيمه وحل يعني جيد ان انت تسوي Apart from this open-minded and knowledgeable reading of Mandayan religion, Ganzibra Salam stresses an important aspect of it that allows it to better fit in its new Western environments, the equality between men and women. The rules, the same to the men or uh, to the women. However, not everybody would agree that this is what really happens in practice. The boys were allowed to do everything here in Sweden. It's not right to do this. In, in the books, in the books, they say that the, the man and the girl are the same. Because if you do something wrong, uh, you have to pay for it. Or oh, not pay for it, but you understand what I say. Because it's the same for the girl and the boy. But it's easier for the boy to. Uh, Across the rules, I know it's, it's very hard for, for girls, but not for, for boys. It's easier, uh, and it's wrong. I think it's because of the parents. They, they, they the parents, they think uh, the man is the man, and they got the girl. Most of them, 80%, I think, it's uh, really old-fashioned. So if you see a girl, if you see a, a Madain boy or a man, see a girl who's uh, working and uh, have a... <laughs> or drink alcohol. <laughs> yeah, or she maybe... <laughs> or she speaks like she has a, a level in, in society. She thinks it's uh, hard for them to, to reach the same level, so they don't want to admit that's why. I, I like the Mandian way to get married, I do. But uh, unfortunately, we are a really small group, it's so tight, and I don't want to get all of the guys in the same, in the same level. But uh, the good so ones, the good did it mean the good ones? Yeah, <laughs> we don't really see the work. good guys, in, in the good guys don't see the good girls. What I see now, as I told you, are like quite 18, 19, or um, they don't think the same. There is a lot of relationship outside. Uh, but by the end, they go and get married with Mandai because they want, they will not, uh, not only Mandai, I think any Christian, they do like this. It's hard, I know, it's hard, it's very hard. But we may can do other things to be happy, you know, shopping, uh, travel, have fun. Maybe other things, we could do other things, I think. It's easy to say, I know, it's very easy to say, but uh, we have to, for us and for our religion, we have to, we have to think more about it. I think it's one of the things that we have to do, we have to have a but I'll just show you a point. The Swedish society is not the same as these situations. ولكن مو بشكل قوانين بس هم يمنعون الدعارة ويمنعون كذا ولكن يحاولون يخلون كل شيء بالاتجاه الصحيح هي حتى بالسايكولوجية ونفسية تماما يعني أنا لما أكون مرتبط بامرأة كل مشاعري واحترامي وتقديري و... ترتبط وياها ولما أكون متعدد النساء ما أكون مشاعر راح أكون كأي حيوان أنهي رغبة جنسية وتنتهي يعني وأعتقد أعتقد إذا ما يكون زواج برجل وأمرأة أو تأسيس بيت يعيشون به 
راح تصير فوضى بالعالم فوضى يعني كل رجل يروح لعدة النساء كل امرأة تروح لعدة رجال فوضى ما ما راح يكون ترتيب هذا العالم ولا راح يكون أي شيء صحيح يعني حتى بالأبناء وبالبنات و وحتى هذا الشيء يأثر على عقلهم وعلى تفكيرهم على حتى الجينات مالتهم تحط من شخصية الإنسان يعني حتى تأثر على نفسيته ولا تعمر حياة ولا تنجب بشرية للكون أنا مخالف الأحكام الدين This is a really strange. They have started over a, about a couple of months ago. They, they, the, all of the, the priests shared. They refused. They refused because you have, you can do the check-in like uh, a few days before the wedding, and now they said no. We do it at the same day. And for a girl, it's really horrible thing to go through that. You know, as a woman, I if you don't trust me, I should do trust in, myself. In that, uh, Um, as a woman, as a grown-up woman, I, I know do what I have been through, uh, and then you do a marriage and uh, as a marriage as like a, a divorce woman. So why is that? You know, they have to change that. Well, what why the guy don't they don't check the man? Maybe 90% of the girls who went to Norway to fix it uh, another another way, and uh, the doctor for the begin starting here in Sweden to, to check. To check. They know about it. How old please? They are not education. That's the thing. Most of them. Most of them. Like uh, I think 90%. And those who have the education, they are not allowed to say anything. So that's why you have to think that it's like a from generation to generation. My father was a priest and I have been a priest. And they don't have that open-minded thinking. And that absolutely, it becomes much more small every year. They're not speaking to each other in Stockholm. In Stockholm, in Södertälje, in Malmö, we have one in Sandvik, one in five or six. Yeah, six. بس هي المشكلة حقيقة اكو عندنا احنا تباين بالمستوى التعليمي عند رجال الدين وهذا هو اللي قاعد يأثر بالمجتمع يعني عندنا رجال الدين تعليمهم بسيط جدا بالمدرسة العامة وبالدين فهذا ما يمكن انه يسمح اكو يصير تطور او فهم او فد شيء لانه هذا طبيعته وهذا مستواي واكو بعض يعني محدود بالطقوس لان هذه الدر اموال يعني مثلا بعض من عندنا نص بالكتاب يقول لازم تلبسون الابيض زين فهو يصور انه بس الملابس ابيض والحذاء ابيض هو ما يتصور انه من قله تلبس الابيض معناه انه تكون انسان ابيض نظيف بكل اعمالك الامور قاعده تتغير وبدون تفكير علمي او صحيح للدين مثل ما يقول يعني فحتى هذا موضوع راشد واحد من المواضيع يعني هذه عدم فهم الصحيح للدين خلى بهذا الزمان عندنا اثنين بدرجه الاشعه so we have to think a lot of it because if we really want uh, uh, to survive this religion, yeah, we have to first of all hurry up and then uh, use our uh, good educated people. Maybe not like me, for me, but I think we have to think about uh, the best for the religion. Is it the money or is it the survive? for the whole religion. Every sheikh have to listen to every question and every critic that, uh, that he gets. You have to listen. And if I if I say to, to some sheikh, I don't like you because you did this wrong. The sheikh have to listen and uh, uh, say to him why he 
And if he did wrong, you will say you should say I'm sorry to do because I did wrong and I would do my best because I'm human, I will do my best to don't do the same thing again. But we are human by the end. We can't do wrong uh, decisions. Even if they give an uh, uh, answer for this, they may, they, their answer may be unclear. In addition to all these challenges the Mandayan community in Sweden seems to be faced with, Ganzi Salam is particularly worried about the future of the Mandaic language. <laughs> Ganzibra Salam believes that what can play an important role in preserving Mandayan culture and religion is to keep alive some old Mandayan traditions that help the community strengthen its bonds. One of them is the Mandayan singing tradition, in Mandaic, of course, and not in Arabic. Few people continue to sing, and even less to compose, songs in Mandaic. One of these people, that Ganzibra Salam highly respects, is Asad Askari, in Ahvaz, Iran. Although he is not a professional, Mr. Askari is valued by his community in Ahvaz and beyond for his exceptional skill. But the most central element that keeps the Mandayans together seems to be the baptism. Actually, I do it every year. Um, sometimes. Okay. <laughs> Not every day, uh, every year. Like, but I'm trying my. Because I mostly am working on the 23rd of uh, May. Yeah, that you baptize for a new life, a new thing, you born from different. Like if you have uh, the. Uh, rest that a uh, new one that you have a uh, more like uh, if you have done everything <laughs> and I'm not the religious at like that uh, I think it's, it's I think it's the uh, it's a way for me I don't know I, I, I feel like I'm, 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 it's a freedom for me to do that so I do take a day off my work I actually match that if I it's the way it's possible if it's, it's possible. Many baptisms of the Sudetalia community take place in a nearby Mandi, the Mandayan place of worship. There are very few such places in Sweden. 
Apart from the pool, the mandi also contains the ritual hut normally made of reeds and sometimes palm tree trunks. In the hut, there are the tiriani. They are plates made of clay. They are nine, symbolizing the months of pregnancy. Some shenti are covered in mud and white cotton threads. The ritual hut represents the sacred place in the world of light. It also represents the cosmic womb, as the participants in ceremonies are spiritually reborn. Ganzibra Salam is preparing himself and the water for the Masbuta, the baptism. He is holding his ritual scepter, the Margina, with his left hand, or keeping it between his left arm and shoulder. The Margina is cut off from a living olive tree. It is a symbol of spiritual authority. Ganzibra Salam, like all participants in the ceremony, is wearing his Rasta, a sacred garment made of cotton and composed of five pieces. Through a series of prayers and symbolic actions, Ganzibra Salam gradually elevates himself to a level of high purity, which, ideally, will reach the purity of angels. He will also lead the other participants to this stage. To conclude the ritual, he will progressively bring them, and himself, back to the normal level of everyday reality. The Rasta must be worn correctly, and the Himiana, the ritual belt, must be properly tied. At the same time with Jan, Ganzibra Salam's wife, is making the Klila, a ring made of myrtle branches. The myrtle is a sacred plant in the world of light, and is necessary in rituals. The Klila is worn on the little finger of the right hand. Later, it is placed inside the turban of men and the scarf of women like a crown. Before the immersion in the water, all the senses must be purified to allow the purification of the body, the mind and the soul. This is what Tarmida Sarmad Sami Bilal is doing now. Tarmida Sarmad accompanies and assists Ganzibra Salam in many rituals. Before getting inside the water, the participants recite the Tarhisa prayer, which means the prayer of permission that will allow them to proceed with the immersion. With the priest ideally facing north, the baptize is taken from the left of the priest, that is, from the world of darkness to the right of the priest, the world of light. The baptizee's head must be put under the water surface three times, so that the breath is interrupted three times and the baptizee is reborn. While in the water, the baptizee recites a short prayer concluding with the phrase May the name of Mandethe, that is, the name of the knowledge of life, be pronounced upon me. They may repeat this phrase while they purify their right arm, with which they will eat. Then, they must remain silent for a while. The purified arm has to be kept in the air in order not to touch anything that could make it impure. Ganzibra Salam applies squeezed sesame, or sesame oil, on the forehead of each baptizee three times from right to left while pronouncing the religious name of the baptizee. The baptizees are giving the kushta, the oath, saying, the truth will strengthen and enlighten you, to which the priest replies, seek and you will find, speak and you will hear. After eating a small piece of betha, the sacred bread prepared by the priest before the ceremony, the baptizees drink mamboha, water from the river, or in this case the pool, blessed by the priest's prayers. They must drink two sips of it, then throw a third one on their left shoulder as a sign of asking for forgiveness. The prayer for the ancestors is an extremely important part of the ritual. After that, the ritual will start de-escalating 
with the oath being reversed. As the baptisees have reached the highest level of purity, it is the priest's turn to vow that the truth will strengthen and enlighten him, while the baptisees reply that he must seek and he will find, speak and he will hear. As the ritual steadily approaches its conclusion, participants vow that the flowing water, the Yardina, will be the witness of their baptism and purity. With the sacred Klila ring thrown into the blessed waters of the river, or the pool, and as many of the personal and communal worries have been washed away by the baptism ritual, another ritual is about to begin. One that, despite all the doubts and ambiguities expressed by members of the community, does nod to the future. The wedding, a ceremony that reflects the wedding of angels in the world of light. <laughs> Teasing songs, sometimes largely composed of improvised lyrics, are often sung during weddings. Some of the clothes of Rim, the bride, and Fadel Atta, the groom, will be placed together to symbolize their sharing of intimacy. Sitting in relative isolation inside or behind the kila, a space separated by a veil, Rim is offered a tray of myrtle branches, flowers, sweets and nuts. There are also candles, incenses and a mirror from which the bride is said to take extra shine to look more beautiful. Ganzibra Salam ties the Sikendela chain on the Himiana belt of the groom. Apart from the chain, the Sikendela is composed of a small knife without a handle and a ring with a seal on top. Four demoniacal symbols are engraved on the seal. A snake, that is, a power related to the earth, a lion related to fire, a scorpion for water and a dragonfly for the air. On the Sikendela, these symbols acquire protective powers for the newlyweds, the newborn babies and the souls of those who have just died. The newlyweds will have to keep this sikendela with them for seven days after the wedding. When they sleep, they must keep it under the pillows. In the absence of a second Tarmida in this ceremony, a man of a mature age is nominated by Ganzibra Salam to take the role of the bride's representative, a kind of ritual father for the wedding. He needs to take her permission for this marriage, which he then reports to Ganzibra Salam. He brings her two golden rings as gifts from the groom, one with a red stone to be put on the little finger of the right hand and one with a blue stone for the little finger of the left hand. He is now purifying her arm so that she can drink three handfuls of blessed water as well as eat a handful of mixed nuts. Rim has now given her permission for this marriage. She has accepted the groom's gifts. At this point, a jar is broken. A second one will be broken later. The breaking of the jars symbolizes the breaking of the brides and the groom's separate physical entities to unite in one. Then, the bride's ritual father shakes hands with the groom and gives him a marriage vow on her behalf. Fadl Atta sits in the ritual hut with Ganzibra Salam and the other priests. Bread, salt, fish, dates, onions and nuts are served on the nine Tiriani plates. The green belt wrapped around the waist on top of the Sikendela and the Himiana is a symbol of fertility. The Klila ring is placed on the head cover of the groom and the bride, like a crown. Again, it will be thrown in the pool at the end of the ceremony. Both the groom and the bride have to drink some sips of hamra. It is a juice made of water, 
a symbolically feminine entity, dates, a male symbol, cardamom and raisins. The hamra strengthens the marital union and enhances fertility. Ganzibra Salam is reading matrimonial hymns from the Kabin Chislam Rebbe book to bless the union of the couple. The bride is offered food and water brought from the ritual hut to be eaten at the same time as the groom also eats the other half. The bride is turned around to prepare the space inside the kila for the groom to be received. As they have not yet been ritually introduced, they are made to sit back to back. It is now the bride's turn to drink three small glasses of the Hamra juice. As he gets on with the wedding prayers, Ganzibra Salam gently pushes their heads back to make them touch each other, while both bride and groom still remain in a state of ritual purity. As Ganzibra Salam continues to read from the marriage book, he throws flower petals on them to celebrate their union. The groom must now return to the Shkenta, the ritual hut. <laughs> Ganzibra Salam now rhythmically recites the Yatali Ziwa, a wedding hymn about the shining light. <laughs> Most participants do not understand its meaning, as they do not speak Mandaic, but are encouraged by Ganzibra Salam and his wife to enthusiastically join in. The groom is now taken back to the kila. It is time for them to ritually meet each other. They are offered sweets and the bride feeds some to the groom. As they hold each other's hands, Ganzibra Salam completes the prayers and gives them advice on the responsibilities of their common life, the meaning of happiness and other topics. By untying each other's Himiana belts, their union is made official and the wedding is concluded. When the belts have been untied, the newlyweds are impure and the priest can no longer touch them. After a week, they need to come back to him and baptize once more. In Sweden, another Mandayan young couple have just begun their life together. How will their future children live their religion, culture and identity in this diasporic environment? Will the fears expressed by many Mandayans about this religion's future come true? 
Or will the powerful and complex symbolic world of the Mandaeans manage to fertilize new approaches or reactivate older ones to secure a future? A question to be examined in the years to come.